In those days, men who quarreled sometimes settled their differences in duels, which often ended in at least one death. Since both of these men lived in the same boarding house, they would often eat breakfast together, including the day of their duel. Shall we duel? John Penn. John Penn. John Penn. Let's deal with this duel and be done with it, shall we? Now we already know the Button Gwinnett died in a duel. And from history we know the Vice President Aaron Burr ends up killing Alexander Hamilton in a duel. But what happens with John Penn? John Penn was born on May 17, 1741 in Caroline County, Virginia to a very wealthy family. His father died when he was 18 years old, which left him as the man of the house and the sole manager of the family fortune. But it was a good thing that his principles were well established at this point because he had no fatherly advice to help him manage the family's money. And though he had received only two or three years of formal education at a county school, he was extremely smart. And since he now had a good sized fortune, it's not a big surprise that he would go on to be very successful. Fortunately, John lived near a cousin, Edmund Pendleton, who was very well known as one of the most accomplished politicians in all of Virginia of the time. John spent a great deal of time in his cousin's library, which was one of the best in the whole Providence. Having read a great deal, John decided to devote himself to law and to become a lawyer, just like Edmund had. After a few years of diligent study, he received his license to practice law at the age of 21. He spent almost 12 years practicing law in Virginia, but in 1774, he moved to North Carolina where he became a revolutionary patriot leader and continued to practice law as well. His talents as a lawyer paid off and he was elected to the Providential Congress the following year of 1775 and was elected to the Continental Congress on the very same year. He was successfully re-elected to Congress from 1777 to 1779. Charles Goodrich writes about John's time in Congress by saying, He was seldom absent from his seat and hesitated not either from want of firmness or patriotism to urge forward those measures which were calculated to redress the wrongs and establish and perpetuate the rights of his country. For while he hoped that Britain and America would resolve their differences and rejoin each other together, once he realized that that was not going to happen, he fully supported the American independence. After this realization, he wrote early in 1776, my first wish is that America may be free. John Penn not only signed America's first governing document, the Articles of Confederation, but he also signed the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776 at the age of 36. While serving in Congress, Penn had an argument over a political issue with Henry Lawrence of South Carolina. Lawrence was the president of the Congress from 1777 to 1778 and he challenged Penn to a duel. Well, neither man really wanted to fight, but they also couldn't figure a way to back down. And in those days when men quarreled, they settled their differences in duels, which often ended in at least one death. And since both men lived in the same boarding house, they would often eat breakfast together, including on the day of their duel. While they were on their way to where they had planned to have the duel, they came to a very large muddy puddle, and Penn helped Lawrence across the muddy puddle because Lawrence was much older, and so John helped his friend across, and they finally realized that this duel was foolish, at which point they quickly apologized to each other and ended the discussion as friends. Well, in 1780, Penn returned to his practice in his home in North Carolina. He died eight years later in September of 1788 at the age of 47, 12 years after signing the Declaration of Independence, and he was buried at his home site. The End <laughs>